Hey guys, we are back at Disneyland. We're gonna try out the food and festival that they have going on here. Maybe go on some rides, see if we have time for it. I will say the ultimate test is gonna to be tonight for the camera. We've never taken out on like a full blown night shoot. So today we're gonna to test it out and see how it turns out. So let's go get some food. So we are officially in line for our sip and savor a pass. It's similar to the Lunar Festival where you get a pass and you can get so many amount of items. How many items? Is it the same amount? I'm hoping so. I think it is. I think it's about six items per person. Are you excited? I'm pretty excited. You had mentioned something about a beef stroganoff. Oh yeah. An impossible, an impossible. An impossible stroganoff. Anything is possible, but I'm excited to try something impossible. <laughs> so yeah, let's go ahead and get these passes and see what Disneyland has to offer us. Oh, yeah. So, uh, do you want a menu? Yes. We officially got our pass. Now let's go try some food. All right, so many of you guys gave us a heads up and told us that we can order all of our food in the kiosk. So we're waiting in line. We're gonna get some uh, beef stroganoff. We're gonna get some, you know, some Baja fish tacos. Sounds delicious. We're also gonna get a few little snickerdoodle macaroons. We'll see what else we get. It's gonna be wild. It's gonna be fun. So what are you the most excited about trying? I'm actually not a huge fan of impossible meat, but I'm excited to try the impossible beef stroganoff. It looks really good. This camera is really good at night. They do call this camera the low light monster. And ironically, <laughs> we're about to be next to Monsters, Inc., which is where Earth Eats is. It's been very elusive so far. I know. But we were able to look at a map. Sandy took a picture, so we got it handy. Who would have thought we could just read maps and find where we need to go? Shout out to whoever created maps. <laughs> but yeah, so we are heading out to Earth Eats. And what are we gonna try here again? Oh, I don't know, maybe the infamous beef stroganoff? Stroganoffs are always so elusive. <laughs> The perfect stroganoff involves the best wainer. <laughs> Do you have a tray? I am out of tray. Okay. Need some silverware. Why not get three? You got some <laughs> napkins? Yeah. Let's I try cannot this. wait. Let's try this food out. <laughs> All right, everyone. We finally found it. We got the impossible bee stroganoff. Check it out, right there from Earth Eats, <laughs> the infamous, the elusive. And luckily our second stop was gonna be LA style for the fish taco and it was right across the way. So we also picked up the delicious fish taco. Ooh, I don't know if I'm gonna try that necessarily. I might take a bite. I'm not the biggest fish taco fan. Why don't we do this? Why don't you start with that? I'll start with the stroganoff. We'll see where it goes. Mm. Okay, so this comes with a cilantro crema, and I will say it's so good. It's not overpowering at all. It gives it the perfect taste of cilantro. And like I said, the, if you guys can see that, the pico is the perfect amount. Sometimes pico can be too much on a plate, you know? Oh yeah, I don't like any pico on my plate. <laughs> the fish tastes really good. It's a little crispier than I would like, but it is really good. In regards to the stroganoff, I would say that the noodles are, I like my noodles a little bit al dente. These are very soft, very well cooked, and it kind of gives it a lack of texture in my opinion. As far as the beef, it does come in and offer a little bit more on the textural side. However, it's a little ground up as mm. far, I, I would rather have it be in chunks, especially with the texture of the noodles. However, I do like the addition of the sour cream. I don't know exactly what I'm looking at as far as the garnish, however, all in all, a very well-rounded dish. I would say, though, I could probably make hamburger helper at home that tastes better than this myself. But, you know, I'm gonna give this dish specifically a 6.3. 6 6.3, huh? Are you, you gonna try this, the taco out? Are you I'm wanna be a, a little adventurous and try it out? I'm not a huge fan of anything in that taco, but I will give it one bite just so I can give an what? honest review of what I think. What? So let's go ahead and switch off. Well, what are you gonna give the fish taco? I'm gonna give the fish taco a 7.2, it was really good. All right. Okay. I was kind of disappointed with the way you uh, mentioned how the meat is prepared and that you can just make hamburger helper. <laughs> I mean. It definitely has mushrooms in it. Mm. I think the noodles are maybe a little bit overdone, but I don't mind it. This is rough. I'm a, like I said, I'm a texture guy, so if I feel that crunch of an onion in anything that I'm eating, it throws me off. And I have never in my life had a taco with fish in it, and that's probably gonna be the only time it ever happens. You guys just saw history happen right now, right here. Only for you guys. Okay, so I know you gave it a six foot of 6.3. I need some stroking off. Come on, <laughs> give, 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 give it a more test. I need to cleanse my palate with some stroking off. With some hamburger helper. <laughs> 
Yeah, I need a big old bite. We didn't get anything to drink yet, so all I got is uh, well-cooked pastas and some beef. Big mistake. Ooh, now I taste the mushrooms now that you say that. <laughs> and, and I'm thinking about upping my score a little bit, but I'm not going to. But you know, I'm gonna give the fish taco, I don't wanna be unfair because it's just not my style of food. I'm gonna give the fish taco a 5.6, which is pretty bad, I guess. But I don't personally like it, so if you're I'm like me- I'm shocked that you gave it that much. So if you're like me and you don't like onions in your food, and you don't like fish in your tacos, don't get it. Maybe. I would recommend do not get it. Maybe double up on the stroking off, if anything. When you eat salsa and that has onion. Yeah, but it's different. <laughs> you know, because usually I eat salsa with chips, so it's hard to distinguish the crunch of the chip from the crunch of the salsa. I need something to mask it so in my head, I'm not thinking the only thing that I could possibly be crunching on right now is onions. And chips do that for me. <laughs> so I do like the pasta. I think I would probably give it a... A 6.2. I'm not a huge fan yeah, of it. Yeah, that's like exactly what I gave it. Did you? Yeah. I wanted to say you're copying me, but it's okay. We think alike. It is what it is. I think it was good. I just don't know if I would buy it again. And like Jared said, I think we could just probably make a better version of it at home. I don't like my pasta when I feel like I could eat it with a spoon. I like to be able to grab onto something with my fork. And this isn't giving me what I need to do that. I'm, I'm scooping as opposed to poking. I like poking my pasta, especially when it's stroking off. All right, cleanse the palate, cleanse the palate. And we just happened to land at a table that already had some ketchup here. <laughs> so maybe we'll put some ketchup on it. No. I don't know if I'll ever be able to think about ketchup without thinking about Kelly and Jim from here on out in life. Thanks again. I was about to say, if you guys haven't checked yeah. out our latest Chemicals podcast, we taste test some Canadian snacks that Kelly and Jim, good looking out, sent us. And they had a, a ketchup chips that uh, you were a huge fan <laughs> no i wasn't a fan of it all but i was a fan that they sent them to us and i really appreciate that yeah all right so as i finish this stroking off and you is it called a stroking off or a stroking off i think it's stroking off but obviously stroking off sounds funnier <laughs> especially if you call it a beef stroking off <laughs> with a little bit of crema so what, what what are we doing next where are we off to so next we're gonna do a barbecue pork mac and cheese can't wait sounds so good and then we're gonna pick up the mickey mouse macaroon very excited. Evidently, that's what you feel is going to be your favorite thing. Well, it has Snickers in it, and Snickers is practically my favorite. I'm kind of a Malteser fan now. <laughs> I've been liking the Maltesers. Which I read is huge in the UK. People were commenting saying that, like, in the UK... Oh, so you read it in the comment section. This wasn't, like, a research thing. Someone just commented it. I think that's the be the best research you can have is by people's uh, response. I've learned so much in the comment sections and videos. So, yeah, I'm going to have to agree. Leave in the comments. Is it strong enough or strong enough? <laughs> or how do you like to say it? Is it better? Funner to say stroking off or is it funner to say stroking off? <laughs> but let's go to the next spot. What is it called? Nuts about cheese. Ooh, I think I saw that on my way in next to the best winner. <laughs> All right, guys, nuts and cheese is the place to be. It's the longest line we've gotten so far. This is definitely the longest line. I got to say, I get it. What are we getting here again? We're getting the Mickey Mouse macaroon and the pulled pork mac and cheese. I think besides the stroking off, that has to be my favorite thing that we're going to try, or at least I'm anticipating it to be my favorite thing. By the look of the line, I think it's everybody's favorite thing to pick up. <laughs> or at least I think it's going to be. Let's see how it holds up, though. Oh, yeah. All right, guys. So we picked up our Mickey macaroon and our pulled pork barbecue mac and cheese. It has like some crispy onions on top, which looks pretty, pretty delicious. And but I know it's kind of ironic because I did just say that in regards to texture, I don't like crunchy onions. However, if they're deep fried, I'm a fan. So these are okay in my book. <laughs> so it's kind of weird we're going to go back and forth between a mac and cheese and a dessert. Yeah. And we're also incognito right now because we're sitting at a restaurant that we're not supposed to be at. So I mean, are we the next Disney Adult Rebels? Ooh, Is there any, such a club? At any moment, we can get kicked out. <laughs> we got to make this fast. And this is healthy. This is a good amount of macaroni and cheese. Oh my gosh. This is why everybody's going to nuts and cheese. You, get, you better try this quick. It's about to be gone. No, you better try this. This is like a 10. I'm giving this a full 10. All right. Okay. Let me get my review. The pasta cooked perfectly. The cheese, not too saucy, not too gritty. Love it. Has a nice sharpness to it. The barbecue sauce, just the right amount of tang. Yeah. I'm gonna say that the pork, the texture is just perfect. It has a tiny bit of crunch to it, succulent on the inside. I mean, that to me is a 9.6, and that's probably the highest score I've ever given something on this channel, even higher than the pizza from Circle K. 
So that's huge. I don't even want to taste the macaroon because I don't want this flavor out of my mouth, but I want to see what you think. So what are you going to give the barbecue pulled pork macaroni and cheese? A 9.3. It is pretty dang good. I feel like you're really copying me with the pasta. Did here. I say 9 point? Did you say 9.3? I think I said 9.6. So, okay, but very close. <laughs> How about this? We just have very similar taste in regards to pasta. Yeah. So what do you like about it? So it has like a smoky flavor. I don't know if it's the barbecue sauce or the actual like seasoning that they put into the mac and cheese, but it's really good. I can kind of like feel it in the back of my throat. Did you get that same sensation? <laughs> Now that you say that, I am feeling it in the back of my throat a little bit. I'm feeling a kick. It has a throat hit to it. Yeah. So I maybe like it. it's just the pork that they use, or the seasoning that they put on the pork. Who knows? Okay. You better be ready for that. It is insanely delicious. Oh, I'm ready. Let's get a little close-up shot about what's about to be in my mouth. Is this too much to eat at once, do you think? Probably. Dude, I think I'm going to eat the rest of this mac and cheese. <laughs> well, he did me dirty on the uh, stroganoff. You ate the whole thing. I took that stroganoff to the <laughs> dome. Wow, this is good. I scored it as a 10 because I think it's just like perfection. But maybe I should have done a 9.8 because there's always room for improvement. I do really like this. I'm not, and I, Sandy's going to debate me on this, but I'm not the biggest dessert or sweets guy. However, I'm gonna give this an 8.4. Reason being, I feel like- An 8.4? Yeah, because I feel like with the macaroon, I want a crunchy exterior. And then as I bite in, I want it to get softer and softer until it's just melting in my mouth. And maybe it's because of the ingredients within the snicker. I just didn't feel that dilapidation of texture. I may have just made up that term. Maybe, maybe not. But I think it could have maybe been a little bit more of a mousse-like texture on the inside to sprinkle with Snickers as opposed to it being full of Snickers on the inside. But this is by far the best dessert I've had at Disneyland. I, I think, what was it that we had last time? What kind of dessert was it? Do you remember? Nope. I feel like we had some, oh, the vanilla macaroon from when we had the birria. Mm. I would say that this is better than that. And, and I thought that was delicious. So I'm going to say 8.4 or whatever the hell I said. That's this what I'm definitely has a Oh, yeah. I can't <laughs> chill out with the, here, eat the rest of that. Come on. Gladly. I like that it's not super crunchy because you get the crunch from the nuts. I really like it. I like the texture, the flavor. Oh my gosh. That is a little, it has a kick. Maybe a big kick, not a little kick. She has a very low threshold to spice. I don't. So for me, it doesn't really have necessarily a kick. Here's the thing is that it has the macaroon and in the middle, it has a peanut butter and like spread. I think that's the filling that they use. I don't know if you guys can see. See that? There it is. And then on top, it has like almost like a mousse. And then they have like a hard sh uh, chocolate shell with the nuts. So it's like full blown peanut butter on chocolate on chocolate. I actually feel like there is inconsistency with the ingredients in that barbecue pulled pork because it seems like I got different flavors as I ate the back portion of it, mm. as opposed to when I ate the first couple bites. So I take it back. It does have a little bit of a kick. <laughs> See, I know what I'm talking about, guys. I will say though, I'm regretting not getting something to drink because the macaroon is, is pretty dense. <laughs> So we almost made it through without getting kicked out of the restaurant area. Jeez. However, it didn't pan out for us. So now we are heading over to, is it Delish? Delish for some carbonara mac and cheese. It's just going to be a night full of mac and cheese. I like it. I'm not mad at that. Let's head over to Delish. All right. We picked up our olive oil cake and some carbonara pasta. There's the olive oil cake. Yeah. And let's now show you the carbonara. Mac and cheese. So I'm gonna start with the carbonara mac course, and cheese. Of course, of course he's gonna start there. Carbonara is probably my favorite kind of pasta. So I have very high expectations going into this. Is it gonna take out the pulled pork mac and cheese? You'll have to wait and see. I've never had an olive oil cake. If you guys have, comment down below if you've ever had one. I've never had one before. Okay, okay. Wow, it's very thick. It has like a lemon zest to it. I like it, I just think it's too thick. But the texture of it is really good. It's really nice. Again, it's just a lot of cake. Whoa, you demolished half of it. Well, half of it is mine. So I ate it very fast. For the carbonara, the noodles, I would say weren't cooked to perfection necessarily, but the texture is nice. It has a tiny bit of al dente to it. The bacon had the perfect amount of crisp to it. Whatever they seasoned it with added a nice added on texture. You have the Parmesan cheese. You have the, whatever the green shit's going on there. I like it. I'm going to give that a 7.8. Wow. I would say that the pulled pork mac and cheese still is reigning supreme in regards to pastas. I'm for, shocked. For the day, but this carbonara is good. I would say it's on par with some of the better carbonaras. However, I do like a little bit more of a creamy sauce. If this had a creamier sauce to 
it, it would have possibly ranked above the barbecue pulled pork macaroni and cheese. I agree. I think I would probably give this maybe an 8.2. I just think it's really garlicky. Almost like it kind of gives you like a little pick on the back, in the back of your throat. I think I'm not a huge fan of the bacon. I know that's what carbonara bacon goes into that, but it's just too garlicky for me. Did you get that when you ate this? I like garlic, so I don't know if I notice high notes of garlic. I think I just enjoy it. I've already tried a little bit of this cake. This is my first time ever having an olive oil cake. I'm gonna say I don't like it. It's very lemony. And I believe what's different about an olive oil cake is they use olive oil as opposed to butter or some other ingredient. I don't know, I'm not the expert. Google it and find out for yourself. However, just in general, the flavor is not appealing to me. It's way too tart and the density is throwing me off. I was expecting something a little bit more smoother, something a little bit more moist, because when I think of olive oil, I think of moisture. However, I'm gonna take one more bite and see if I'm wrong, because the flavors have been a little inconsistent throughout the experiences so far. Let's see if this is the same. Yeah, I think this garlic is definitely kicking uh, some heat in my mouth, but it's really good. I think the noodles are actually made perfectly well. They're not too soft. It's just too much garlic. I can't say that enough. So I don't know what this is necessarily, if you guys can catch it, but it's like a gelatinous goo. So do you know what this is? What is this gelatinous thing? I have no idea. I'm gonna just eat it. It's merely nothing. It is just for show. What is it called when they put like parsley on a dish? It's just a little a garnish. Added. It's just a garnish. I think it was just jello with no flavoring. So a non-flavored gelatin. However, I do want to get something else in my mouth because I want to cleanse my palate for a little bit more of this carbonara. And actually I'm going to have more of this cake. I'm going to give that a 4.2. Not a huge fan at all. I think I'm gonna change my score for the pasta. I think I'm gonna give it probably like a 6.8. I'm what, not a huge fan of it. What was it? I think I gave it a 7.2 maybe, I don't remember. But it's going back down to 6.8. I'm not a huge fan of it. I don't remember what I gave it, but it still tastes the same, so I'm gonna grade it the same. Not my favorite pasta so far, which I'm shocked. I thought this would be. Yeah. I will say that I'm not a huge fan of lemon zest pastries or cakes, but I actually don't mind it. I think that the cream or the frosting that they put on top of it, and I think this is raspberry. I'm kind of drilling a little bit. The raspberry bites, it pairs really well with the lemon zest. Did I grade that? I, I think know. it was in the low fours, but what do you- gonna... Low fours? It was in the, I think it was a 4.2 if I'm not mistaken. What do you grade that? I'll give this maybe like a 6.7. I don't even know if you already graded it or not. I always seem to forget the ratings. <laughs> but we have two more things tonight to try. Where are we going next? The Peppers Caliente to pick up some chili rellenos. Ooh. Yes. And they have some high standards to hit in order to get a good score from us because not only does her mom make amazing chili rellenos, but my stepmom does as well. So let's see what Peppers Caliente has to offer us. Bring it. So we got our chili reno empanada. So it's not a full-blown chili reno. It's a chili reno empanada and it looks pretty tasty. I'm curious about the sauce on top. Do you want to take a bite real quick? See Ooh, how... I think it's going to be too spicy for you, to be honest Ooh. with you. I think this might have too much of a kick. This might be too intense. It's almost too intense for me, and I have a pretty high tolerance for spice. All right, we're going to have to so, scrape it off, guys. Just to give you guys a little inside shot there. Let's see how hot this is. Big mistake to not get something to drink. <laughs> Ooh. I'm trying just to get the filling without the sauce on top, but I think that's probably what's spicy. It's definitely the sauce on top that's spicy. I would say on a level of one to 10 on a spice meter, this is a six or a seven at minimum. This is hot. Now in comparison, as we said, to like home cooked chili rellenos, this is definitely a fast food version of what I've had as far as like authentic chili rellenos. Well, it's a chili relleno empanada, so it's really like a mixture of two into what? It's a fusion. Yes. But uh, I would say it's good. I would say it's not like apples to apples with a chili rellenos that I've had before, but I like this concoction. It's just very hot. Very spicy. I probably would give it maybe like a 5.8, only because it's too spicy for me to eat, but the textures are really nice. So 5.8 for me. What about you? I would give this a 6.4 because I do like it. And actually the heat isn't too much for me, especially with the dairy element of the cheese inside. It's a nice rounded way to smooth out that kick. Here, show them again so, what, it's, what you're working with. With that cheese in the center, it does offer some relief from the heat. <laughs> so it brings the seven down to like a four in my scale. However, I'm sure for you, it's just way too hot. I used to really love spicy foods, but I just can't handle it anymore. Maybe because I just don't eat it very often. I think you would have benefited greatly from a side of sour cream right now. Yes and a milkshake. As I take another bite. You, you, want, I mean? you want the last bite or do you no, want me to have okay. it? Okay, I'm gonna have the last bite. I highly recommend though, if you like spice, 
The texture is really good. The flavor is really good. Just the spiciness level for me is just, it's too hot. And for our last stop of the night, where are we headed to next? I'm Cork, California for a raspberry almond cake, which I think is gonna taste delicious after this hot. <laughs> we definitely need a dessert after this. Okay guys, we almost didn't make it. But they were all closing. All the kiosks had their windows down. You'll see it in the B-roll that I put over when we were talking about it. Yeah, so if you come, just know at nine o'clock, they shut it down. <laughs> yes, but shout out to David for yes. taking care of us. Thank you, He was David. able to get us this, what is this exactly? This is the raspberry almond cake. And the reason he let us have it is because we had already prepaid for it. And because he's a nice guy. You could tell offside David was a cool dude. <laughs> I knew he was gonna hook us up. I would've been disappointed if he didn't, right? Let's go ahead and try this. You try it first. I think you need more relief from the last thing we ate than I do. Let's just say it gave me immediate heartburn. You guys know what I'm talking about. All right, let's see. So it looks like it has somewhat of a glaze. I would say almost a pineapple glaze, but I don't know what I'm talking about. It so. definitely has somewhat of a glaze. It's glistening. Now there's that moist cake that I think Jared was probably looking for earlier with the olive oil cake. It's like very tarty because it has a little frosting. It kind of has like a tart sorbet type kind of mm. taste and texture. I do get a hint of the sorbet. Mm -hmm. I know what you're talking about. I'm not a huge fan of raspberries. Typically they're a little bit too subtle for me. However, with the combination of the pineapple or whatever else is going on here, it sharpens those high notes and really brings them to life. I think the cake itself is very moist. Would you say moist? <laughs> yes. I know how much people love hearing that <laughs> word. The cake is very moist. Moist? Moist. Moist. I also am not a huge fan of raspberries in my dessert, but I think, like Jared said, it pairs very well with the glaze. It's not a frosting, but it's really good. Yes. What do you want to give this on a scale of 1 to 10? Our final treat of the night for the Food and Wine Festival. 9.7. Wow. Way too high, in my opinion. <laughs> I don't know what warranted that. I'll ask in a second. However, I'm going to give this a 6.2. What? It was good, but it wasn't blowing my mind by any means. I would say in regards to a flavor profile like this, I actually enjoyed the vanilla cherry macaroon that we had a few vlogs back. I think that was much better, and I can't grade this higher than that. So wow. I'm going to take one more bite just because I need to still get a little bit of a kick out of my mouth from the chili <laughs> relleno, but this has not been my favorite dessert that I've had at Disneyland. I'm just going to say it. I am it. so shocked. I mean, you graded this three points less than the Mickey Mouse. House macaron? Listen, I might be on a on a kick right now because the chili reno was very spicy and I needed something to settle this heartburn. Wow, so life hack. So, <laughs> if you ever want a dessert to taste better, eat something really spicy beforehand, I guess. But I will say I will give it an 8.2. So wait, are you are you going back I'm on right, your score? I think I got too excited. <laughs> You got I'll a little it, advantageous with yeah, that original Yeah, I'll give it score. an 8.2. It is really good. I really like this a lot better than the other cake. It's really the only thing you base it off of. Yeah, the other cake was the equivalent of the stroking off to the pastas. The other <laughs> cakes at the bar, extremely low for cakes. But yeah, I'm pretty stoked on how the night went. I feel like we were able to try a lot of good foods. And, and I think it was worth it. For how much it cost and the amount of food that you get, you get at least eight items per pass. Well, how much did, they, did it cost? It cost about $50. So, so 50 bucks. And how many things did we try? Did we try eight things? Did they witness us try the limit or are there still more on the ticket? Eight things and then we still have another pass. So maybe we'll come back. I would probably just come back and get a bunch of the barbecue pulled pork <laughs> macaroni and cheese and maybe one of the macaroons. And I would say it's well worth it. Probably the best meal that you can get here at Disneyland for the price points. Breaking news. We're interrupting this outro. We're standing in front of award-winning best wiener yes. to let you guys know that before we head out and do a final send-off, we know you want it. You want a mid-ride review. And the only ride that really has a line that I think we can make it within our time frame yes. is Monsters, Inc. <laughs> so we're going on Monsters, Inc. Let's do it. Yeah, let's do it. What? All right, we must have gotten hooked up because we got the buddy pass. Ooh, look at that buddy pass. Shout out to the lady. We didn't get her name, but no. in the front who recommended we do it. Evidently, the line is longer than we thought. It's about 20 minutes. Yeah. The buddy pass should break it down, though, for under 20 minutes. <laughs> Maybe 18 minutes. We'll see. Who knows? <laughs> Let's see how it goes. Yes. Yeah. And we're off. Oh, <laughs> and we're stopped. Oh. Welcome to the end of the ride. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Wow, that had a little bit more pep in it than I thought it would. I've never been on this ride. I'm really looking Hello. forward to it. All right, I'm gonna turn it around now so you guys can be in on the road. There's a lot of stops in this ride. <laughs> Pretty jerky. Program for a special report. A child is on the east in Monstropolis. Oh, ooh, very futuristic. 
there has been a child security breach. Oh, do you see this? Neither confirm nor deny the presence of a human child here tonight. And that I thought it was real. I thought there was a child on the loose. <laughs> shook me like a dog. Oh, Googly Bear. Googly Bear. Wow, this is cool. Wow. <laughs> my thoughts were not my own. <laughs> There's Boo. What up, Boo? We got a house plan shaking. <laughs> sushi, sushi. Mike and Sully and Boo. Oh my gosh. There's a, oh my oh, god. There's a lot going on in here. Okay, mid-ride review. This has been the easiest ride to film by far. <laughs> I've really enjoyed the scenery. I mean, a lot of visuals going on in here. What do you think of so far? I think it is so cool. Highly, highly recommend. Everything looks incredible. Very I love cool. It. Let's get back to the scenery. Look. <laughs> I've never seen the movie, but are doors significant? Yes, because they have to go through the doors to scare the kids. We'll be watching the movie very soon. Oh, that was so cute. That was pretty cool. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and rate this uh, 7.3. What are you gonna rate this ride? An 8.8 .8 and a thumbs up. All right, and now back to your regularly scheduled program. And on that note, is this gonna be the end of the video? Is that's all, that's all guys, we're all done. I hope you guys enjoyed it and we'll see you guys next time. Bye.